I don't think the, <laughs> I don't know what to make of the conspiracy theory. I mean, the conspiracy <laughs> theories, you know, it amazes me that now the conspiracy theories, a lot of them are, they're coming full circle on both sides, which is, mm -hmm. you know, we've actually managed to get conspiracy theories from the Shia side saying that we're actually propping up ISIS because of support for, Shiri, for Syrian opposition elements, and that that's completely linked. And then you see conspiracy theories from the other side saying that we're on Iran's side and we're fostering this crisis to gain control of Iraqi oil with Iran. So you kind of, we've managed to actually alienate everybody, which is typical of US policy in the region. Um, in terms of the, the first part of the question about um, ISIS and um, that we're avoiding getting involved, that we should get, avoid getting involved, the perception of the GCC countries. You know, I, uh, they're doing it obviously out of self-interest. This is a growing, this is sectarian nature to this conflict. And Saudi Arabia certainly doesn't want to be seen as, as closest external ally in the world, the United States, external to the region, I mean, getting involved on behalf of suppressing what it views as a, a, a Sunni opposition movement, one that does have ISIS as a strong component, but that has lots of other components and disaffected tribes. So I'm willing to give that some credence. I, I, you know, I mentioned that I think it's a viable option to, get, to not get involved. We, we can't allow Baghdad to fall. We can't, um, you know, we, we have interests in Iraq and we want to see the government of Iraq survive, but it's, we're walking down a dangerous path if we, if we intervene militarily on behalf of the Iraqi government overtly with troops on the ground against a, a Sunni opposition movement that has some legitimate grievances.